So about this wiki pages. My first edit was updates to some cycling roads in Finland. And uh, then I've uh, hand drawn my first working papers, which uh, then I proceeded to collect data in the rain. And uh, I always liked uh, OpenStreetMap for it provide incentive to actually leave the, the room and to go explore your neighborhood. And I uh, search for ways to speed up collecting data and to improve it. So in a year, I bought a car, uh, good enough uh, for mapping grade five traces, tracks with uh, horrible smoothness. And uh, is this type of car mandatory in Russia for mapping? Well, yes and no. Most of the time you'll be driving uh, well-paved roads, but there's uh, once in every trip when uh, I was grateful I have four-wheel drive or wishing I had a tractor. The first thing I learned was photo mapping. Uh, while someone drives, you sit uh, as a passenger and shoot everything you see. And then by using a photo of GPS receiver, you georeference images and process them one by one. The drawbacks of that approach were apparent almost immediately. Uh, it's, uh, photos become, become blurred uh, when made at night or in the rain. Uh, it's not always uh, clear what uh, you're making photo of, and you can, can't make photos of uh, linear or virtual properties, like uh, bridge bounds or road smoothness. So, as any Russian, I, of course, have dash cam, but uh, uh, video mapping is a myth. To process just five minutes of video, you would need at least an hour. So then, I bought a voice recorder. Uh, and uh, mapping with it is great. Uh, it uh, doesn't uh, uh, require looking at it. Uh, you don't need to point it at anything. Uh, and it even works at night. You just uh, say everything you see in it. Uh, and uh, there were times when we were, we were traveling in a company and I was just sitting in a corner and whispering to it, uh, there's a bus stop on the right, a crossing bus stop on the left, shop 24 seven. And uh, processing audio notes is not so great. Uh, Timestamps are a pain to get right. Uh, uh, JSON can load only WAV files. And uh, the major point is after two hours of uh, deciphering your speech and time to map locations, you will hate your voice with a passion. So never again, a couple of hours of notes just lies on voice recorder I don't use anymore. Uh, so, and there is a problem with precision. So for images, it's uh, two seconds plus a known distance between uh, a car and uh, an object. For audio notes, it's uh, up to five seconds. And on 60 kilometers per hour, it's uh, 40 to 90 meters. And since I like mapping city limits and milestones, uh, this is not good enough. So I need a way to uh, place markers with sub-second precision, uh, a simplicity of uh, processing photos, and information completeness of audio notes. So how do I do that? The solution is quite simple. Just write it all down. Instead of images, uh, I georeference uh, text messages. And uh, I was inspired by the, some old article about how Navtech survey does uh, their surveying, and particularly by those photos. Uh, at first, I thought of uh, making something like that as a JSON plugin. So there was a Surveyor plugin, and uh, I just had to add uh, freehand drawing and uh, some better presets. But the project stalled, and I decided to make something very quick and which proved to be much better. That is Nanolog. Uh, all uh, it needs is a laptop. Uh, you drive as a passenger and uh, type everything. Uh, when you press any key, uh, there's a timer, 
And when you press any key, it stops. You can uh, finish a message uh, in no hurry. And uh, there are some uh, shortcuts uh, for frequent objects like milestones or city limits or bus stops. It produces a plain text file with a subsecond timestamp and a message. And uh, GPS trace is recorded with dedicated device or a different program. Uh, and uh, then you can load uh, those messages, basically everything you saw during your trip. Uh, as uh, with images, it uh, requires some points for georeferencing, but instead of uh, time, you reference it to uh, terrain. So you load a trace, uh, points uh, at uh, imagery, then find the refer referencing point where there is detailed imagery, uh, align it, uh, imagery I mean, and uh, then shift points so they match, match uh, imagery features. As you can see, uh, those points match uh, bridge bounds pretty closely, and they were taken at 90 kilometers per hour. Uh, the precision uh, is around five meters. It depends on uh, GPS precision, not on speed. So on, uh, I know, 130 kilometers per hour, the precision will be the same. And uh, in two years, uh, I, with my wife, have collected points worth of uh, 3,000 kilometers. It could have been more, but uh, uh, I couldn't use the data at the time, and I finished JOSM plugin just uh, this Monday. Now, the problem was, uh, most of the time, I was driving alone, or everyone but me was asleep, so uh, in OpenStreetMap, at the time, uh, there was... Uh, no way of uh, uh, active blind mapping. That is uh, when uh, you can't divert your attention from a road. And that's what uh, I'm adapting Nanolog for now. So first thing is uh, I took a USB numpad and assigned shortcuts uh, to it button, buttons. I left the city with nine shortcuts. Uh, in 30 kilometer, kilometers I left three. And it still was very hard not looking at it to know which button to press. Because when you are not looking, it's uh, very hard. All buttons feel the same. Uh, so, the idea is uh, to place uh, some buttons on a wheel. Uh, some of them uh, add uh, presets uh, for frequent objects. And there are two special buttons. Uh, one of them uh, starts voice recording when pressed and uh, stops when uh, released. Uh, this uh, uh, suggests for uh, shorter notes, which you won't have to listen twice and uh, get tired of. And the same button has precise markers. Instead of shouting now, you can just uh, quickly release and press it again. And the second note makes a photo, and it solves the problem of unknown distance. You press it to make a photo and release when you are passing the object you are making photo of. Yep. And uh, this system obviously can be used not only by drivers, but by cyclists or basically anyone who is traveling at great speed. So. I, there's no doubt most of you spend a lot of time traveling by train or by bus and spending it uh, staring at the window or reading a book. Now you can use this time to actually map some things. And uh, it's uh, obviously not about format or program, but uh, basis on an ecosystem. So, for example, uh, timestamp message format can be extended with attachments for sound or images. Uh, it can use uh, actual OpenStreetMap tags uh, to speed up mapping. And uh, we can make a dedicated website to upload collected data. Because uh, unlike images, uh, this data can be processed by other people, even not speaking your language, in case we use images and presets. Yeah, and some of that work was done uh, last year during uh, Open Surveyor Google Summer of Code project, but it's not quite finished. 
Yeah, and by adding fixed coordinates and uh, allowing to move points by hand, we can make better working papers. So, for example, when you find yourself uh, in an uh, unmapped location with few hours to spare, uh, you can, uh, just to comment, so coordinates don't have to be uh, actual coordinates, it uh, can be its own coordinate system. So, uh, you, if you find yourself with no GPS and no internet connection, you can still draw some uh, lines for road network and start collecting points and house numbers right away without basically anything. And then load it in JOSM and process. Or if you have internet connection, it's not crazy, then you can uh, download some data and update it right away. Yeah. So, by, uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, that uh, this principle of mapping with no GPS, with no internet, no advanced uh, devices uh, is quite simple, but it uh, gradually can change the way we map. Basically, this is the last talk on this conference about field mapping. And uh, in those years I'm in this project, I've seen tremendous advancement in uh, rendering, routing, geocoding, but we still, as five years ago, print uh, raster tiles for working papers and make photos. So there were virtually no advancement in uh, field mapping. And uh, that's quite a pity. And uh, uh, I remember that OpenStreetMap project is uh, firstly about surveying, about uh, going out and getting to know your neighborhood. So go outside map and maybe you'll come up with some advancements. Thanks. <laughs> we have time for questions, I think. Uh, I wanted to know if you have tried the dash cam and uh, some dash cam have, uh, I don't, don't know the term, the photo for, photo like, uh, one photo for each second. And, you know, you can put the, the, your, your photo to take automatically one photo each second? Well, uh, the problem is the same as with dash cam. Uh, you, after, I don't know, six hour trip, you end up with thousands of photos and you can't actually know which ones are useful. So you spend uh, a minute uh, on each photo and it takes hours and hours much longer than you were driving. And it's very daunting at, and uh, you get tired of it quickly. So it, actually no use. You, you can collect a lot of data, but you can't process it. So there's no meaning in it. <laughs> and th that's the problem with most uh, data collection methods, is uh, with, uh, as with audio mapping, as with dash cam, and uh, other things. Is It's very easy to collect tons of data, but it's very hard to map. And if you can't map, then it's no good. Okay, so are there further questions from the audience? Not that I would have some. One question I, I was wondering um, is whether can you, you can't reduce the number of buttons even further to, for example, only one, and then use something like Morse? Because it's, <laughs> I think it's very difficult, in the, as you explained, in the night uh, to, to remember which key does what. Well, right now I'm going to... Uh, use only one button, is basically all the buttons on the keypad, which uh, just uh, act as a voice recorder. P press to start recording, release to stop, and uh, quickly release to leave a marker. And it would prove uh, enough to map something. And as for Morse, well, uh, you can't really uh, divert your attention from road, and remembering Morse codes is, uh, w would take some mind <laughs> 
which uh, you better spend on uh, monitoring situation or not. Okay, so I have two more questions. One would be uh, a hopefully very simple one. Which systems uh, is Nanolog available? Uh, it's a Java uh, program, so all of them, Linux, Windows, MacOS. Okay, that's great. And uh, one more thing that you mentioned was that you, you said, okay, you have some difficulty with recording the track type. Mm. Uh, so did you think about using some sensors to, for example, record vibrations or something like that? Uh, there are some uh, startups that do exactly that, but uh, obviously there is a problem. For example, suspension in my car is not very good, so uh, such sensor would record every road as horrible smoothness. <laughs> and uh, there are a lot of uh, broken uh, tram tracks in my city, so there's perf perfect asphalt on the road, but uh, there are many places when tram tracks intersected, and uh, it also would be uh, impossible smoothness and so on. So it's not uh, reliable. It's good for uh, uh, collecting statistical data on a large scale. Uh, is the whole road of 100 kilometers good or bad, but not good for actual mapping with meter precision. All right. I really, I really like what you did to your car, um, that first and foremost. But So how about the other way around, where you um, not input, but get stuff from OSM? For example, if you know where you're going, in exa in, for in advance, you could download all the OSM notes along the route mm -hmm. and um, try to resolve them as you drive. Have you tried that? Actually, I didn't. It's a good idea. Uh, I thought of that for... Uh, uh, better working papers. So, uh, you, yeah. if there is a, an app for a smartphone, you can download some data of place where you're go, going and then update it. But for uh, driving in a car, uh, that's uh, a bit harder because uh, you can cover uh, some thousands of kilometers in a couple of days and uh, data for it would be just tremendous amount. And uh, also, if you're driving alone, it's, uh, you, you would need to look at it and divert your attention. It's, it's dangerous. You mean you don't have a heads-up display in your car? That you just, uh... <laughs> well, it depends. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, so more questions from the audience. I really like your your approach there. Uh, one problem I always have is uh, with right-left uh, distinction when you do this kind of mapping. So have you done something in this direction? So knowing where the feature is on the on which side of the well, world? Well, uh, when you are correlating collected uh, points with GPS trace, uh, not only coordinates are uh, taken, but also direction of travel. So you can sum uh, uh, visualization of uh, is point to the right or to the left. So basically, uh, everything you map, including photos, uh, is pointed uh, at the direction of uh, driving. So we, <laughs> camera is pointing forward, but it can be panoramic or some, something. So the direction, left or right, is would be obvious. And. Uh, yeah, and uh, it is taken from a GPS trace, so it can be displayed. Okay, but that's for the photos. Uh, but if you have these points, so I mean, you just said the example of city limit. That's that's clear. That's on the road. But if you, I'm I'm mapping a lot of bus stops, and you have to know, and well, they're of course on both sides of the road. Well, yeah, there are. I don't know if I can show it. No, it's too slow. <laughs> okay. Uh, usually I just write uh, as text messages, bus stop on the left, bus stop on the right, but, and it's uh, good. And for uh, open surveyor and uh, for future projects, uh, this would be a parameter of point, so it can be processed and displayed automatically. Uh, 